Ugh, I hate Mondays. And you know who else hates Mondays? Our favorite fat, orange, and lasagna-loving cat, Garfield. Garfield is living every lazy cat's dream, sitting at home all day with his owner John and dog Odie. But wait, what if this is actually just Garfield living a dream? What if his house, his owner, and everything else in Garfield's life is just a figment of his imagination? The first Garfield comic was introduced to the public in 1978. Garfield was a huge hit. He launched off the newspaper and into our hearts alongside John and Odie. However, 11 years later, a week before Halloween in 1989, newspaper readers were concerned by a strange and rather creepy Garfield comic. The comic showed Garfield wandering around an abandoned house with a for sale sign in the front yard. Unable to cope with the prospect of his happy life being false and the truth of being abandoned, he screams out, I don't want to be alone, and is magically transported back into the loving arms of his owner, John. This comic sparked controversy that the whole Garfield compendium has just been a facade imagined by a slowly starving orange cat. At the end of the comic, author Jim Davis leaves the reader with an eerie message. He writes, an imagination is a powerful tool. It can tint memories of the past or shade perceptions of the present or paint a future so vivid that it can entice or terrify, all depending on how we conduct ourselves today. Uh, okay. Fans of this conspiracy believe that Davis must have been inspired by an Italian short called Valse Triste. It's from the 1967 Italian film Allegro Non Troppo, made to copy Disney's Fantasia. The short in question follows the story of a cat wandering around the destroyed remains of his abandoned home while seeing visions of his family and a wonderful past life. Until it was revealed to the audience that the cat was in fact a ghost the whole time. Sounds very familiar, don't you think? So is this feline that we've fallen in love with really just imagining everything due to his life of desolation? When you consider the Italian cartoon, everything does make more sense if you assume that Garfield has been imagining his whole life. Now I've gotten along with cats, but I've never been able to understand them the way John does. People speculate that the reason John understands Garfield so well is that he's reacting to his body language and facial expressions. But there's really not much variation in Garfield's faces. But if John really is a figment of Garfield's imagination, of course he's going to know what's going on in Garfield's head. Kevin Skinner was mindlessly scouring the internet when he came upon this particular theory. And coincidentally, Kevin actually had a business meeting scheduled with Jim Davis later in that week. When Kevin went in, he knew he had to tell Davis about what he had found. The story goes that when he confronted him with this theory, Jim Davis just laughed about it. In the Garfield 20th Anniversary Collection, Davis actually goes into greater depth of how this script came to be. It says that during a writing session for Halloween week, he got the idea for a decidedly different series of strips. He wanted to scare people, and what do people fear most? Davis said, being alone. Davis was also quoted saying that this strip was not inspired by some cartoon. This refutes the idea that Davis was basing the idea for the strip off of Valse Triste, which admittedly makes it harder to draw the conclusion that Garfield's fate parallels the cat in the cartoon. It shifts their similarities more towards coincidence. And as for John's clear understanding of Garfield, it's a cartoon, people. Garfield takes place in a fictional world where cats can eat like an infinite amount of donuts and not get diabetes. So based on all this evidence, I'm gonna have to give the Garfield conspiracy one lasagna out of five. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Cartoon Conspiracy. In the comments, let me know what you thought of this weird and sad and cat friendly conspiracy. If you guys have a conspiracy that you'd like us to cover, email us or make a video and we might feature it. Make sure you guys subscribe to Channel Frederator and join the Frederator Network and I'll see you guys next week. We want you to join the Channel Frederator Network. So as long as you're making animation, or if you're interested in animation, illustration, speed painting, drawing, comics, toys, cosplay, whatever, you're eligible. No requirements, and we like new creators as well as established creators. Channel Frederator Network. Become a member of the family, click here for more info, and join today.